Well, happy Friday. You've made it to the end of another work week, looking toward the weekend. I know it's not what it used to be because weekends were a time for getting out and doing things and congregating with people, maybe with friends on a Saturday and Sunday, congregating with the church. But uh, what a wonderful opportunity it is just to be alive. I look around me, I see the sun shining, birds are singing, uh, grass is growing, things are alive everywhere. God is alive. Praise the Lord for that opportunity. And you know where there's life, there is hope, and uh, God wants us to be different. I bring that up because you're probably right now not looking so much at my face. You're looking at my shirt, aren't you? See, I intentionally wore this shirt because this shirt is so out of character for me. I got this shirt last summer when Tammy Lee and I had the opportunity to go out of the country on a vacation, and uh, I don't wear this kind of stuff, but it was available there, and I wanted it as a souvenir, and I wore it one night while we were there, but I haven't worn it out ever since because it's just so different from what I normally wear. Generally, for me, I'm wearing these plaid shirts that I've I've worn forever, and I wear solids on Sundays, and, I'm, you know, I'm fairly predictable, but but this shirt is, is different. Now, here's why I wore this. I wanted to use this as kind of an object lesson. In our world today, people have seen Christians for years and really don't think a whole lot about them. They go and they come, and they're not very distinguishable from everybody else. In fact, for some, they would say, the reason I'm not a Christian is because of Christians. But we're going to be coming back uh, here in a few weeks, God willing, uh, to a time of re-engaging with people, and we can be different and distinguishable from everyone else. Uh, here's what I really hope is uh, the time will come, you'll run into somebody at the store or in the community, and you haven't seen them in several months, and they say, well, how'd you do during the, the whole virus episode? And here's what you can say, look, uh, during the, the episode of the virus, I... I, I grew. God protected me graciously, and, and I really had a, a time of spiritual reflection, and I looked internally, and God did a work in my life. Now, you might say, that doesn't sound like me, but you can make it sound like you when you talk to someone to communicate that this was not a terrible time for you. I, I really hope that we will come out of this whole season as a people who are set apart and noticeable to other people because we handled it differently than perhaps they did. Uh, I go back to our entire time with Elijah. And by the way, uh, it'll soon be two years since he was born, June the 6th. So I look to that. And I, I think of those days often as we dealt with it. One of the things I wanted to do as a, a minister of the gospel, but specifically just also as a Christian, was to deal with it in a distinguishable way that people would say the Christ that lives within you uh, made a difference and you look different than most people uh, that deal with this. You know, the scripture challenges us to be that kind of person, a different person. It says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. What tremendous truth there. Um, Peter is challenging believers to be distinguishable. See, I don't have to wear a t-shirt that says I'm a Christian or have a bumper sticker that says those driving this car are believers. I don't have to post things on Facebook to somehow communicate to you that I'm a Christian. It should be noticeable. And I hope that this whole time of having to be away from the church and being away from each other has caused you to draw near to God so that you could be that chosen person. You could be that person belonging to God, a peculiar person unto to him, that you would live such a good life that people uh, would notice it. It goes on in the, the next chapter, 1 Peter 3, a very famous verse about showing a distinction 
verse 15, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Wow. Always be set apart unto Christ so that people will notice, so that they will ask the question of why. See, I'm afraid that what's happened in the last number of years is we have tried to make the church more attractive to the world by making the faith easier, which in turn has made the lifestyle of the Christian not as distinguishable. And so we invite people to our churches and try to have things that appeal to their tastes rather than meet their needs. And church, uh, you know, at Bayou Vista, we've been doing this for a long time where we preach the gospel unapologetically. Uh, we have not sought to add water to the mix so that it's easier to swallow. Because listen, if there's no difference, then what's the difference? Why be a Christian if it really doesn't change the way in which I live? So you look at this shirt and it really kind of is sharp, isn't it? I mean, I like the way it looks on me. Tim Lee and I took a picture when I was wearing it uh, last summer and I like the way I looked in it. I really do because it's good with my black hair. Don't, don't you like that? I know you think that. You can post something about, Brother Steve, I really like your shirt, and I will appreciate that. But I would much rather someone say to me, you know what? I haven't told you this, but I've been watching you for a long time, and you're different. And I appreciate that you're faithful to God in all the seasons of life. So let's be a person that people notice because they notice Christ makes a difference in me. As we look ahead, of course, this weekend we will be online. We will have Zoom Sunday School classes, all seven of them meeting again. So please get in touch with your group leaders. Uh, all the children are meeting together on one Zoom call, the youth on another, adults one and two on another, the pastor's class meets by itself, the ladies' class by itself, and adult three also meets and so get in touch with those who conduct those meetings also the uh, college class too get in touch with those who lead uh, those groups and they will be glad to give you the information to get on the zoom call and those are scattered throughout the day so do that possibly today or tomorrow so you can be part of that on sunday we'll be on at 11 o'clock on sunday on facebook you can also find that on youtube and the plan right now depending on the weather is that on mother's day may the 10th uh, we'll meet back in the parking lot again with the hope that the next week we're able to resume uh, public worship in the sanctuary. Listen, as your pastor, I love you. I look forward to being in the room with you. I look forward to singing with you. I know it's going to be a gradual time of us getting back together, but it's closer than it's been in quite a while. Let's be different. Let's make ourselves different so that when people see us, when this is over, they'll say, what is different about you? And you know what you can say? Jesus is what is different about me. God bless you. Have a great remainder to your Friday and a super weekend. Bye-bye.